Hey guys, I hope everybody had a great July 4th and it is a work from home day. I'm going to vlog it and I got a new toy. All right, so I know it's nothing too fancy, but it is a bike again, and it's a vintage Raleigh from the 70s, and super awesome in green, which I love. If any of you guys ride bikes, let me know down in the comments below, because I kind of enjoy mine a lot, and I'm about to go ride it, and then check back in with you guys. All right, so I just made it back from my bike ride, and before I hop into work, I just wanted to throw a little nugget out there. I got this bike, right, and I'm not super into cycling. I had a bike when I was in college and I rode it around. Never really took it super serious, but I know that I enjoyed it. So I wanted this bike and I'm trying to get back into shape and it's a good way to form cardio, but I'm not like super inundated with that scene of cycling. So I did some searches online for apps when you're riding your bike to help with things and track, you know, how fast you're going, how far you've gone, stuff like that. And there are a lot of really good apps for cycling, how fast you're going, GPS tracking, miles and splits and all of that good stuff, exactly what you're wanting out of an app for cycling or running or any kind of fitness thing like that. But another thing that I've been looking into recently because I'm going out to Colorado soon is hiking up mountains. And in Colorado, there's mountains that are over 14,000 feet and they call them 14ers. And there are some websites dedicated to the climbing and hiking of these mountains. And they're really good informationally. They're not so great as far as like tracking progress or the way that they look. You can tell that they were designed a long time ago and never really updated because they're not there to be pretty, they're just there for information. And I've been thinking a lot recently, why would somebody want to get into code? And there are a lot of reasons, and one of them is for the money because it does pay really well. One of them is for the flexibility of most of the jobs in the tech scene because a lot of tech companies and startups and stuff like that are super flexible and have great work-life balance, and there are a thousand other reasons that someone may want to learn to code. My reason for learning code was that I had an idea for an app that I really wanted to build. And today and in the past few days, getting into this cycling app thing and looking at mountain climbing and hiking websites, I've realized another really empowering thing that I have in my tool belt now that I've learned how to code. And that is if I don't see something in the world of tech and apps that I think is useful, that I could use, that I want, I have the power to build it now. And I know that seems really apparent, but I don't know if everybody kind of realizes that. If you learn how to code, you have the power to not just be a slave to the app store. You can build what you need for your life. And that is very, very exciting. Imagine if you needed a bunch of furniture and you wanted it to be exactly how you wanted your furniture to look, and you were a carpenter then you could go build that furniture exactly how you wanted it. How awesome would that be? It's the same thing with the tech world. If you want something, you can build it exactly how you want it if you learn how to code. All right, so I need to go get some work done, but I will check back in with you guys here shortly. All right, guys, I'm back and I got some work done. I showered, ate some lunch, and it's just been overall like a really productive day. I'm back here to talk a little bit more about what I was talking about earlier, having the freedom to build what you want and kind of why learning to code doesn't have to be just about learning how to code. So every so often when I think about my future and coding and the tech scene in general, I wonder to myself, am I going to be able to spend the next 30 or 40 years of my life sitting in front of a computer just coding all day? And that's a legitimate question, and I think a lot of people struggle with that, especially if they didn't come from a computer science background, or if you haven't been hacking away a computer since you were a kid and it's like your first love. But I think to find value in learning how to code, you don't necessarily have to assume that that's what you're gonna be doing for the rest of your life. You can use code to gain other skills, get into a company that you wanna get into, find a good job while you're learning other things and many other things and me personally I don't necessarily see myself coding for the next 30 years of my life what I see is that I enjoy to code and I enjoy 
building and creating things. And eventually I would like to build and create my own things and own my own business and be an entrepreneur and that sort of thing, which coding enables me to do much quicker than if I would have never learned how to code. I also don't think that it makes you any less of a developer or any less true to why you're learning how to code if you use it as an ends to a means. It doesn't necessarily make you a bad programmer. It actually doesn't at all make you a bad programmer. It just means that you're picking up a skill so that you can use it to further yourself and it might not be in the world of programming and that's okay. So that's all I have today guys. If you have any other thoughts about using coding as an ends to a means or building cool stuff that you just want to build and not necessarily making it your 40 year plan, feel free to leave those down below. I always love to hear you guys' thoughts. As always, if you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button because they're super awesome and they make me smile. If you haven't already, click that subscribe button to follow along in the journey and I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you again soon. Bye.